New Year's is celebrated many different ways by many different people around the world. So today we're going to learn a little bit about how different people celebrate the New Year. In China, on February 12th, uh, the Chinese Lunar New Year is celebrated. Many Chinese children, uh, children dress in new clothes to celebrate the Lunar New Year. People carry lanterns and join in a huge parade led by a silk dragon, the Chinese symbol of strength. According to legends, the dragon hibernates most of the year, so people throw firecrackers to keep the dragon awake. In the Chinese lunar calendar, each of the 12 years is named after an animal. According to legend, the Buddha asked all the animals to come to him before he left the earth. Only 12 animals came to wish him farewell, and as a reward, Buddha named a year after each one. In September or October, Jewish people celebrate uh, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's a belief that God opens the Book of Life for 10 days, starting with Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and ending with Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. During these days, the holiest of the Jewish year, Jewish people atone for any wrongdoing and forgive others. A ram's horn trumpet, uh, known as a shafar, is blown before and during uh, Rosh Hashanah and at the conclusion of Yom Kippur. In Thailand, a special three-day water festival is celebrated uh, between April 13th and 15th. It marks Songkran, or the Buddhist celebration of the New Year. Traditionally, monks would wash statues of the Buddha with water. This tradition has evolved to include big celebrations of water and even water fights. Parades feature huge statues of Buddha that spray water on passers-by. People also release fish into rivers as an act of kindness. At Sankran, people tie strings around each other's wrists to show their respect. A person can have as many as 25 or 30 strings on one wrist, each from a different person. The strings are supposed to be left on until they fall off naturally. Uh, a new year celebrated, uh, com uh, commonly celebrated in Minnesota is the Hmong New Year. Hmong New Year is celebrated at the end of November. Hmong New Year at home is a time when families come together to reunite, reunite their souls with their bodies. That is to, uh, to connect... Um, your inner life with your outer life. There are feasts to celebrate the reunion and coming together of families. Elders teach younger people traditional songs and give offerings to ancestors, and traditional dishes are prepared. The New Year's marked by three days when you aren't supposed to spend any money or argue, and you're supposed to wake up early and start new healthy habits. New Year's Eve, according to the Gregorian calendar, uh, is the most commonly used calendar in the world. Uh, according to the Gregorian calendar, the new year begins on January 1st. In many places, people stay up late to see the old year out and the new year in. Although, everywhere in the world, uh, almost everywhere in the world, church bells ring, horns, toot, whistles blow, sirens shriek, and the, uh, London's uh, Trafalgar Square and New York City's Times Square swarm with crowds of happy, noisy people. Uh, the hullabaloo, there's a vocab word for you, expresses people's high spirits at holiday time. Now, uh, that January 31st, uh, New Year's is celebrated in many, many countries, and there are different uh, traditions um, uh, that mark the occasion. Here are just a couple of those. Those are pretty fun. In Spain, locals will eat exactly 12 grapes at the stroke of midnight to honor a tradition that started in the late 19th century. Back in the 1800s, vine growers in uh, the Al Alicante area came up with this tradition as a means of selling more grapes towards the end of the year, but the sweet celebration quickly caught on. In Brazil, if you happen to be in Brazil on New Year's Eve, don't be surprised to find the oceans littered with many white flowers and candles. In the South American country, it's commonplace for citizens to take to the shores on New Year's Eve in order to make offerings to Yamoja, a major water de deity or goddess who is said to control the seas. In Japan... Japanese culture, it's customary to welcome the New Year with a bowl of soba noodles in a ritual known as Atoshi Koshi Soba, or Year Crossing Noodles. It's believed that the soba's thin shape and long length is meant to signify a long and healthy life. Many folks also believe that because the buckwheat plant used to make soba noodles is so resilient, people eat the pasta on New Year's Eve to signify their strength. Now these are just a couple of traditions. There are many more, and I'm sure you have some traditions of your own in your house that you like to celebrate. These are just a few themes of New Year's around the world. 
people celebrate. Uh, uh, they often have traditions that they do each year to ring in a new year. They reflect, they think about the past year, some of the good things that happened and some of the bad things that happened, and they make resolutions. These are uh, things looking forward um, that we might want to do differently or uh, uh, maybe try harder to do. And so uh, today we're just going to do a little bit of this, talking just a bit about celebration, reflection, and resolution or goals for the year. <laughs> 